Hey folks, how you doing? I'm Andy and this is Nail Guitar, the channel where I teach you to play songs acoustically so that you can play them without a band. We're doing acoustic renditions is what that means. And I have for you, as with all my lessons, a free song lesson guide to guide you through this, make your learning as easy as possible and great for reference afterwards because you can keep it there and refer back to it without having to come back to the lesson because you're not going to remember every chord of every song that you go through once. That's just the reality of it. So I want to help you with smarter learning. So grab it now via the first comment down below or in the description down below. Take your pick. Both of those links take you to the same place. Grab it. We'll make reference to it as we go. So let's put the pieces together. First of all, what are the chords? What are we going to do for the strumming? And uh, what do these sections all feel like once we, uh, we put them all together? So the chords are D. We have G. And C add nine. First and second finger. Down a string. D, G, C. Add nine. That takes us through our verse and our chorus. The only exception chords are in the pre-chorus, which are A, B minor. If you have trouble with that one, it's your only bar chord. You can do the small, easy B minor. C or C add nine like we just did. C add nine, which we've already got there. Those are our chords. If you can get your fingers around those, then we just need to get the strumming pattern. So hiding underneath this rhythm, this one's a little deceptive because you, you could hear on the outside. kind of does work, but hiding underneath it, instead of just those divisions of breaking the beats in half, one and two and three and four, and hiding sneakily in there is breaking the beats into quarters. So to get this really to feel good for both you and the listener, is getting that underwriting, what I call the infinite strum. So, so important for developing a good groove. So the first step is getting that underneath. Once we've got that happening, we can then start to have a look at What I call a 3-3-2 three, three, groove. You have two bunches of three and then a bunch of two. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So the ones of each of those are the full strums. One, and then the two, three is the lower notes. Or you can think as full bass, bass. The full chord and then just the bass notes. Uh, however you want to think of it, <laughs> it's up to you. As long as you get the result, that's the important thing. So if we just try that on the D chord, You might find that tricky to begin with because it's lopsided. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. But one way or another, you've got to put the time into it because that is what the song is built on. So if you can't do that, spend the time doing it. We'll come back to it once we've gone through these other pieces. So. So he gets D for the one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. And then we split up G, C. So G gets three. One, two, three, C. So the C gets the one, two, three, one, two. G, C. G, C. Put that together, uh, starting on D. If you've got
got that solid, you're then in a great place to then be able to make embellishments and start to get some of those upstrokes in there as well. So once I start to fill that in a little bit, we get down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, is what it turns into. G, C. You notice we're spending a lot of time on this because it's the verse and it's the chorus. It's the most important parts of the song. <clears throat> really important to focus on the important bits, not get caught up in the tiny little details, spending 90% of your time on maybe the pre-chorus, <laughs> which we're about to do, which is A. Took it off of granite, B minor, C. C at nine. Notice there, instead of doing a regular old C, you also have the option of doing that C add 9 without the fourth finger. If you find that transition from there, from C to C add 9, a little bit tricky, make it easy for yourself. Really similar sounding as well, anyway. So you can see me, I was doing it in the intro there and you may have seen me sneak it in here and there. A little sus chord, D sus two, taking our second finger off. One other little uh, sneaky bit at the end of our, well, leading into each verse. So that would be. We get a little step up to get us from the G to the C add nine. Three, O, oh, two, three, and on that last three, we're getting the full strum. If you know your notes, G, A, B, C is what they are. Now, if you happen to be lucky enough to be playing this with a mate, in the original, the guitar really is sitting back for the verses. You can arpeggiate these chords. Arpeggiate just means pick out the notes. So while you've got a mate doing the strumming, you can. It doesn't really matter which strings you're hitting as long as those strings are inside the chord. So obviously for the C chord, you can't go hitting the, the E string there because that isn't inside the chord. D, make sure you're sticking within those four and you'll be sweet. There you go. If you got some value from that, be sure to hit the like button and feel free to leave a comment down below. And of course, do yourself some good karma favors by subscribing and hitting the ding-a-ling ding bell 
to be notified as I upload new lessons. I upload a new one every single week. Now, if you want to learn songs smarter, well, I have created a very, very handy thing for you to help you do that, and it's completely free. It's called the Easy Songs Cheat Sheet. It's all the easiest songs that I've uh, taught here on the channel over 10 years, and I've put them together in a smart sheet. That's why it's called a cheat sheet. It makes your life easy. And yeah, it's got all of those songs there, links to each of the lessons, all the chords listed for each of those, because I know a lot of people really look at uh, learning songs through the lens of, can I play those chords or not? Well, I've listed them all there for you, let you know if there's capo, setting, all that sort of thing. Uh, it's the simplest, smartest way that I thought I could help you guys out uh, with a really handy resource. But learning a bunch of songs quickly is really the big goal there both handy for beginners and intermediates because as an intermediate one of the big challenges in getting a repertoire together to perform is getting a bunch of songs that you're not struggling with so that you can kind of get through your set and you're not sweating like a crazy thing so it is available for you in the description down below my name's andy have fun playing your acts see you for the next lesson save countless hours searching for easy songs to learn and download my easy songs cheat sheet Click the link in the description now to get it absolutely free.